Hello there. Let's talk a little bit about DRM. I'm obviously not at home, so I'm gonna do a little bit different video this time. And this is something that I have been having on my mind for a long while. So I have bought this book right now, like today. And this cost me one euro. This is now my book. I can read this book whenever I want. I can give it to somebody. I can sell it if I want. And if I do this with Kindle, then I guess it's kind of my book, my ebook, but I cannot borrow it, I cannot lend it, I cannot sell it, I might even lose it if Amazon decides not to keep it on their servers anymore because they have already demonstrated this uh, ability in the past. I, I'm going to link uh, below the news about how they did it. Uh, and. I guess we can apply this to all of the kind of entertainment mediums, right? Video games, books, uh, movies, music. So what's the difference between digital and physical? So with books it's quite clear. You have like a paper book, yeah, it has pages, you can feel it. This is physical edition. Uh, what's a digital book? It's an ebook, right? So why is ebook so different? I mean, obviously it's digital restrictions management, right? It restricts us from all of the things that I mentioned, lending, selling, and basically owning properly, right? Um, so how does this apply to music? Music comes in different forms. Preferably today we just listen to streaming and we don't we don't basically want to own music today. I mean, that's the general sentiment of today. So when I was a kid, we have had music in what we would call today a physical form, right? We had audio cassettes. Uh, before that, there were vinyls, and which are also very popular today. And then we had CDs. So, I mean, what are CDs actually? Are those digital or physical editions of music? I mean, obviously, we consider them to be physical, right? Because you can have it in your hand, you can touch it, you can lend it, you can sell it. That, that, that's, that's like an explanation of what a physical edition of something is, but also it's digitally recorded on it, so I guess you can just copy it. Uh, it's a little bit moot, but I guess it falls under physical, right? Because it doesn't have really any DRM. I think DRM is what makes it uh, digital. Yeah, and what about video games? Before we had floppy disks, then we had like cartridges, then we had CDs and Blu-rays and now again we have digital downloads. So digital downloads obviously falls under truly digital format with DRM and everything, but what about the Blu-rays nowadays with PlayStation 5 for example? These also have DRM, it's just that it works differently, the license of your game is actually on your blu-ray as far as i understand this technology right so in theory and in practice you can lend your game you can uh, sell it uh, you can sell your license right because the license follows the medium that you have your game on so this is like the best case scenario of a digital version of a product because games are digital products uh, nowadays uh, or <laughs> I mean since forever since it's just a code uh, but the version that we have on digital data carriers like CDs and DVDs are the best form of digital editions in my opinion because it's not restricting you in any way except for the um, little text that nobody reads. If you go to Sony's website, you will find uh, basically uh, a text where it says that you are not actually allowed to sell or distribute this medium that you bought. So it's a little bit moot uh, under the under the eye of the law, 
but generally we do treat it we do all treat it like a physical medium and we do sell it uh, as ever we want and we don't really care right uh, so this is something that could be addressed a little bit little bit better in the future but let's let's see what the truly digital versions of video games are now today so the most popular stores on pc would be like uh, steam and gog good old games and steam has recently uh, said on on a couple of occasions that they do not allow us to sell our games or to even give our game library to anyone after we die that that was a question that somebody asked uh, and it was actual uh, for a little while and then gog said that they are also having a similar rule but that they are willing to work uh, with um, i guess the lawyers or, or the law i don't remember the wording that they used but basically they left the door open for us to leave your games library to somebody else so gog games are not actually having any drm you know, so in the eye of the law, they might even be a little bit better than PlayStation discs, which you can sell or land, but you shouldn't, because the little text tells you not to do that. Um, and DRM-free games uh, on GOG, well, they're basically they're the same, uh, because you can lend them, you can download them and lend them or sell them in theory but how would the owner feel that they have bought a product if they cannot feel it in their hands right this is a little bit uh, over the top uh, uh, brainstorming on my end i mean uh, i have already al always been thinking about the difference between a playstation 5 blu-ray and a gog drm free game because w w what's the actual difference o both is really just a digital product it's just a code with some graphics uh, that is uh, considered art right it's, it's art plus the code uh, and the version that the GOG gives you you get handed over you can copy it on whichever medium you want you can download the game you can copy it on any blu-ray disc and you can feel it in your hand if you can feel it in your hand then why wouldn't you have the ability to sell it right because there is no drm so what makes the uh, ps5 version of the game sellable it's the drm you see my point we are spinning in these weird circles where having drm on the disc makes it sellable and if there is no drm on the disc because uh, the seller didn't put any uh, on your game then you cannot sell it yes and why can't you sell a GOG game on that is already recorded on a blu-ray or a CD because the buyers don't want to buy a game that doesn't have a DRM so it's the same with movies right you can have them uh, downloaded you can have them streamed you can have them uh, purchased uh, on uh, Blu-ray but generally people just stream them over Netflix and don't really want to own them so where do we stand today yeah I think with books is pretty clear where we stand people still buy paper books and people do buy books uh, from the online stores it's just that I would prefer if we would have this um, I guess audacity to not succumb to Amazon and their DRM platform and instead go for an open source uh, ebook reader if we want to buy digital books uh, or ebooks uh, or any actually ebook reader which allows you to download an EPUB file which you have purchased uh, with your own money. Uh, so I don't know how, how do you prove that this is your book right how do you prove that you haven't copied from somebody else who have just happened to purchase it DRM free I guess we can keep the receipts but you know nobody checks those anyway so I'm not sure how much that matters 
and what's the conclusion of this video today people want to own DRM products for example with games everyone seems to be preferring Steam or at least the uh, very major majority if I can put it this way um, you know uh, if if it's like that so at least we should be given the right to lend our games I mean we can do that sort of uh, with the family uh, thingy that uh, Steam has but why can't we sell games because the uh, publisher publishers of the games don't want us to do that right but on the other side, we still have physical mediums for PlayStation 5, so how does that work? I mean, these are the games that we can sell, and do, 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 do manufacturers uh, and, you know, uh, game makers like that, I don't think so, but they do allow that, and they don't allow us to sell digital games. So I think we should be given the right to have you know, equal rights with physical and digital versions of our products that we have paid the exact same price and often even higher price for the digital version because the physical one you can buy uh, secondhand and it's usually a lot cheaper. You know, this is a very complex topic and I don't think that we are ever going to be able to solve it completely, but I would love to hear what you think about DRM in all our consumption medias uh, and for now I'm just gonna enjoy my day in Paris and have a nice day. Did you know that paper books don't require any proprietary software to run? Just saying, it's a big plus.